Uh, so welcome to the maintainers track talk on open telemetry. Thank you for coming. I wish we had a larger room because it looks like there are other people trying to come in. Um, my name is Morgan McLean. I'm one of the co-founders of open telemetry and like my colleagues here, I'm on the governance committee uh, and I'll let them introduce themselves and then we'll get started. Uh, yeah, I am Daniel Dyla. Um, I work for Dynatrace. I'm also on the governance committee and I maintain open telemetry JS. Hi everyone. Very happy to be here. I'm Alalita Sharma. I'm on the Open Telemetry Governance Committee as well as uh, work on the collector as well as the Go library. And um, again, uh, I'm from Apple and uh, also lead uh, the observability for AIML there. Hi, my name's Ted. Uh, I work at Lightstep and I am also on the Governance Committee and I mostly herd cats around the specification working group. And I forgot to mention I work at the Splunk. Um, so it's been a big year or two for Open Telemetry. The project has gotten even bigger than it was before. It's, it's, the impact is quite considerable. I think we've been coming in various uh, incarnations to, to KubeCon since, I mean, Open Telemetry was announced in 2019, and certainly there was Open Census and Open Tracing prior to that. Like, Ted, I'm trying to remember, like, when the first time you would have come to Cube, probably 2016, 2017, yeah, something there. like that. Yeah, so, like, there's been a long journey in, in these projects uh, to, to success, but, like, we're, we're really proud of what the community has achieved. So we're going to start by giving people a brief overview of where Open Telemetry is right now and then the roadmap, and then we're going to dive into the semantic conventions, uh, as promised. Uh, so, as I mentioned, we were announced in 2019. In mid-2020, uh, tracing, the tracing specification and implementations hit uh, stable in open telemetry. And that's when the project really started to gain adoption. Uh, last year, we announced at KubeCon EU that the metric specification, so the second signal type in open telemetry, had reached 1.0 status. And then in KubeCon uh, Detroit last year in October, uh, we had the announcement that a number of our major languages had achieved their 1.0 implementations of metrics. And since then, we've seen the adoption of that really grow. But we've achieved a lot more than that as a community. There's other data types coming in. Uh, it's probably pretty well known at this point that logging is being added as a new signal to open telemetry. And you can see here on this, on this timeline, um, when we started logging and when we started to achieve things like data model stability, we're hoping that later this year um, we'll achieve 1.0 or stability for logging uh, across uh, all the different components. Uh, obviously, open source project, data for TPD. Uh, but that's, that's where we are with logging. Uh, and there's also other other things we'd like to talk about, including the Open Telemetry demo, which is a demo environment you can use to test out Open Telemetry and to um, uh, sort of experiment with it. Uh, it contains about 20 different applications written in different languages, and you can use the demo to uh, go and look at our language instrumentation, the collector, and basically use it as a sandbox to to make changes uh, and see where, if you were instrumenting your own services, if you can use it as a guide. Uh, to understand uh, how, sort of best practices for open telemetry. So very, very useful resource. I think that just hit version 1.4 in the last week, yep. um, which is exciting. Uh, there's also profiling, which has started. Oh, we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, and another uh, thing we wanted to, to discuss on this timeline is that we now have, uh, or we're about to have community Lambda layers. So if you use Amazon Lambda, um, the open telemetry community now has official Lambda layers that you can subscribe to and use, which is also fantastic. Oh, and one last thing there, I almost forgot. Uh, OTLP, uh, the Open Telemetry Line Protocol, or Open Telemetry Protocol. Uh, it is uh, fully stable now uh, for traces and metrics. Uh, it achieved stability uh, some time ago uh, for, I think, the gRPC format and the HTTP proto format. That was also achieved recently for HTTP JSON, so OTLP is completely stable. Not that it's taken any changes uh, for a long time, uh, but we now have that sort of stamp of approval on it. All right, I promise to talk about logs. Uh, logs is very, very exciting this year. Uh, we have traces, we have metrics in open telemetry. Logs is the third of many signal types that will be added to the project. There's two paths that we're taking in open telemetry to approach logging. This is somewhat distinct from how we've done other signal types in the past because logging has a lot of prior art. Uh, so the most, uh, sort of the first phase of this, which is not stable now, but it's actually relatively mature within the collector, is using the hotel collector, our primary agent, to go and tail logging files, to, you know, human readable flat text files from disk, just like every other logging agent in the world does today. Uh, the performance of this is actually really impressive. Uh, it's just a native part of the collector, uh, and it will parse these log files and convert them internally into the open telemetry formats for logs. And you know, it's nice because it appends all of the open telemetry resource data and metadata that you would expect to those logs, and then you can send that data to whatever destination you choose uh, using OTLP or any other exporters. 
Uh, and so that's great and that's fairly straightforward. It's a great way to take existing applications that write logs and bring those logs into OpenTelemetry without redeploying, updating, making any changes to your app. There's also work being done in parallel uh, that will allow you to capture logs directly from your applications natively in an OpenTelemetry format. There are numerous benefits to this. Probably the most prominent are performance because these logs don't have to be written as human readable text files to disk. They can just be sent in a binary format directly to the OpenTelemetry collector, so definitely better performance there. Uh, there's also benefits in that the, the metadata uh, and, and sort of structure of your logs is guaranteed to be strongly typed because they're not just being written as a human readable text file. Uh, we're taking an interesting approach with this uh, that also deviates somewhat from other signals where the OpenTelemetry SDKs and APIs and language uh, instrumentation, of course, will have these hooks for logging, but they're not generally meant to be used by end users. So I'll give an example for Java. For Java, a lot of people use Log4j to write their logs, amongst other logging libraries. Uh, we don't necessarily want to have OpenTelemetry sort of compete with that or, or, or just sort of offer a sort of confusing second choice. So what we've actually developed is a logging bridge. So if you're in Java, for in this example, and you're using Log4j, you would just have Log4j export those logs in process to OpenTelemetry, which would then uh, uh, process them and, and deal with them from there. In some languages in the future, we may choose to have a developer-facing logging API. I think C++ is sometimes raised as an example of a language where there isn't a sort of super native logging API that people already use. So in those cases, yeah, we, we may begin to offer one. But I think in most languages like Java, we'll simply adapt to whatever the APIs are that people are already using. Of course, if you have feedback on this, thoughts on this, please let us know at the end of the session or, or in the community. All right, we'll go a little quicker through the other items here. So we've achieved metric stability, as I mentioned, and the implementations of metrics across most languages are now 1.0. I think Go just hit 1.0 or is about to hit 1.0, but we already achieved that for like Java, uh, Node.js, Python, various others. Um, there's still a bit more work on metrics, like it is stable, but we are, of course, building more integrations for more technologies for metrics because it's fairly new. We want to provide a nice turnkey experience for people. There's also work that needs to be done on implementing exemplars that was explicitly out of scope for 1.0, and we still need to finish the job on that, as well as implementations for high-resolution histograms. Uh, finally, for my section, uh, profiling is a big, uh, sort of a growing topic, with, topic within OpenTelemetry. I think last year in Valencia, this was probably the first time this really started getting discussed seriously. But since then, we've created a profiling SIG. There's a lot of new community members. I think roughly 20 or so people have joined OpenTelemetry really to focus on profiling. And so our goal is to be able to capture um, uh, application profiling information. I think generally under the covers, this is usually stack traces or data from PProf or JFR or other existing profiling technologies and include that within OpenTelemetry and allow that data to be to come in and be processed and gain the same metadata uh, and, and have the same export capabilities as all other data that comes through OpenTelemetry and thus be correlatable uh, later with your traces and metrics and everything else that come through. Uh, for just a very short background around profiling, this is going to be aimed at distributed profiling or often called continuous profiling. So this is a extremely low performance impacting way to get profiling data from a distributed system. So this is not the kind of profiling where you're instrumenting every single function call. That is very valuable, but it also comes with a very high performance impact when you do it. Uh, but if you are running you know, multiple instances of an application, this is very valuable because you can build a snapshot of its performance over time uh, without really any cost. And you can do this in your production environments continuously. That's the kind of profiling that we're aimed at. Our current status is that we're still working on the draft of the specification. It's going to take some time to close on that. Uh, and from there, of course, throughout uh, later this year and well into next year, I imagine, uh, we will be uh, working on, on finalizing that spec and then pushing to, towards implementation. Daniel. OK, uh, I guess I'll talk about client instrumentation. Um, this is something that, as the JS maintainer, I get asked about a lot. And in the past, I've always had to say uh, it's something we're working on. but you know, there's a lot of moving parts and we haven't had a lot of time and bandwidth. And I'm happy to say that now we actually do have time to focus on this. Uh, so things have actually started moving recently quite quickly. Um, I know that there is a RUM SIG that's been meeting for, what, the past year or so, I think, maybe a little bit more than that, uh, which has been working on uh, setting up the specification for semantic conventions for RUM. Um, the logs data model, which is finally stable, is a huge part of that. Logs and events are, are very important for RUM, uh, and the, uh, the data model in particular was super important. Um, there's also the, uh, the experimental, uh, or, yeah, experimental event API, 
which uses the logging data format, actually. Uh, under the hood, we consider them to be sort of the same thing. Uh, but events are a little bit different in that they are meant to be called by instrumentation. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, that's something you should ask the RUM SIG about. Um, further, we also have the uh, WebJS SDK Sandbox. Uh, this is not a new Web SDK, uh, but it is something where we're using to uh, explore new JS ideas that are very browser specific. Uh, right now, the JS SDK is very node focused, very focused on the back end. Uh, it does work in the web, but uh, there are some feedback that we've gotten uh, that, that things could be improved. Uh, so that's really what we're doing to try to explore those ideas and what could be changed and improved and then fold them back into the main JS uh, SDK. Um, also, obviously, when you talk about clients, you have to talk about mobile. Um, there's ongoing work in uh, both iOS and Android, but uh, particularly in Android, there's a, uh, a large code donation that's been made recently or will be made soon something along those lines. Yeah, yeah sort of right now, um, where uh, I expect Android to be moving very quickly in the near future here uh, towards you know, a working uh, implementation. OK, um, another thing that we've been working on a lot recently uh, is configuration. Uh, a lot of feedback that we get in OpenTelemetry is that it is confusing to configure, particularly with instrumentation where you're working in multiple languages. Uh, it can be very difficult to configure it in a way that uh, is consistent across multiple languages and multiple teams, which may use multiple languages, uh, and the collector, particularly if you're maintaining a lot of collectors. Um, so recently, if you've been following the OTEPS repository, you may have noticed that the configuration OTEP merged. Uh, this is the first step towards specifying a configuration file format, which will be used across all of the SDKs, uh, and eventually, I believe, also the collector. Um, so this is important uh, because it should solve a lot of these problems. Uh, it is early days, but uh, that work has been moving along very well. Um, important points with that are that uh, uh, it is structured config, so instead of having like uh, uh, flat environment variables and stuff like that. You can have uh, typed configurations. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it will also have a, a JSON schema for validation, so you'll know when you write your configuration that I've written it correctly. If you write it incorrectly, you can have a validator that tells you this is where you messed up. Um, it will have environment variable substitution, which is important moving over from the existing uh, sort of environment variable heavy configuration style to the new style, uh, and also with secrets management and stuff like that. Um, and also uh, OpAmp, which is our remote configuration protocol. Uh, I believe the protocol is more or less done, uh, but implementations are underway. Uh, I don't think the protocol is stable done. It's not like 1.0 or anything, but uh, uh, the work is largely complete to, to make it usable. Uh, and there is also a Go implementation, which will be used in the collector, uh, and we expect additional uh, implementations coming soon. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I wanted to cover um, integrations that OpenTelemetry has today. And um, both within the project, which are baked in into the project itself, but also outside, that is other projects or other uh, teams adding uh, support for open telemetry. And, and again, this is super important because you know, the more integratable open telemetry is in terms of collection environments that are supported and the type of telemetry that is you know, ingestible, the more pervasive uh, a standardized technology like open telemetry becomes. So with that said, again, uh, within open telemetry, as you can see, several streaming protocols such as uh, and, and uh, projects such as uh, Kafka support, skywalking, uh, very exciting areas, you know, because data at scale, we all collect uh, in our environments, literally petabytes of data, telemetry data. And Kafka is very typically used for streaming, so Kafka and Skywalking are very important areas there. For Elasticsearch and FluentBit, again, very pervasive in the observability world. Uh, graphite support, Jaeger for tracing, 
open census, you know, and again, part of our lineage in open tele telemetry is open census and open tracing, so full compatibility with um, both of these projects and the integrations that already exist in the field is super important as, you know, it enables uh, teams who have implemented with open census or open tracing to be easily able to just swap out their uh, modules and be able to use open telemetry out of the box. Open metrics, which is the standard, as many of you know, with Prometheus specifically, uh, guaranteeing interoperability from open telemetry to interoperate between the two protocols. Uh, Prometheus itself, which is very pervasive in the Kubernetes world as well as with um, other implementations where you already have metrics that are being collected. Zipkin, and of course the W3C trace context, which is very interoperable and fully supported by OTLP. On the outside, again, these are just some of the integrations that have already happened in the last um, couple of years. Kubernetes, of course, out of the box. I'm just jumping out there because Kubernetes is a great example, but and a very large example. But Containerd, CRIO, Docker, Jaeger, Micrometer. Again, you, Docker under the hood runs the Open Telemetry Collector, so that's been huge. Uh, sorry, Jaeger, I should say, I misspoke. Uh, Micrometer for Java, Quarkus for Java. So very popular projects and also. Uh, fully integratable. Next.js in the JavaScript world, .NET uh, with Quartz.NET, as well as ASP.NET, where Microsoft's teams have done a tremendous job with uh, not only contributing to the project, but also you know, other work that they have done within their teams. Nginx, uh, all the flavors of Nginx, Wildfly from Red Hat. So again, this is an example of some of the integrations that have already happened. Again, if you are seeing something that is not integrated and you use it, please feel free to make a proposal on the project. And we are happy to work with the teams on the other projects or other um, uh, even, even other vendors to be able to provide that support. So it's very easy. You can just file an issue, and then you know, we typically go through and review those and see what we can support. And also worth calling out, these are the native integrations where yeah. these People are starting to use native OTLP, native open telemetry APIs. This is in addition to the hundreds, if not thousands, of, of integrations that we have through our good contrib point. repos that make existing technologies yes. work with Hotel really yes. well. And, and uh, very good point, Morion, because again, if you go into the contrib repos for each of the languages, language libraries, there are literally hundreds of um, supported uh, APIs which are, exist, which are fully interoperable with open telemetry. And when we say native instrumentation, what we mean is that the instrumentation is actually baked in. You don't have to install some Something separate package additional. written by somebody who is not the maintainer of the actual open source project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point, good call out. Uh, and again, if you don't see something here, please just ask. Uh, you know, we're happy to go and find, either find it for you if it's in the contrib repos or take a request. The other area that I wanted to call out, and this is super interesting to Open Telemetry's world because uh, this request was made uh, at a community meeting in Open Telemetry in uh, Detroit in KubeCon. And uh, this is really looking at how do you have a common query standardized language? Uh, because as you know, many of the vendor implementations as well as other longstanding implementations have had query languages which are very specific to their implementations and optimizations thereof. So this is something which bridges those islands, right? And being able to actually provide at least a baseline for this uh, specification was something that came up as a discussion and an end user request uh, from eBay and Netflix at the open telemetry meetings. And this was, again, uh, something that was deferred by the project to be held in the observability tag as a discussion work group. So if you're interested in this discussion, as well as the uh, work on identifying use cases and supporting this long term, uh, please do join in for this work group. And again, this has been submitted as a formal work group to the TOC, the CNCF TOC. Uh, and we hope to have a formal work group shortly. Um, with that said, again, Ted, you wanted to cover ECS? Yes. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do a section here about the semantic conventions in general. but. Uh, the biggest news on this front is there is another project that has been maintaining a set of semantic conventions. What we mean by semantic conventions is the schema 
of the actual data. So you have OTLP, which is the protocol, but then you want to have a standardized way of describing an HTTP request, a database call, um, all of the things your program's doing. We want all of that uh, normalized because that really, really helps, especially uh, when you get into lots and lots of microservices and also when you get into machine learning and other automated um, uh, forms of analysis, having regularized data is huge. Um, we've been doing our own work on this for a while, but uh, there's been another project, Elastic Common Schema, that's been around for a long time, uh, focused mostly on uh, logging. And they came to us with an idea that we could merge these two projects together. So rather than having two separate standards that might go their separate ways, we should just have one standard. Um, so Alex, if you wouldn't mind standing up, people give like a round of applause to like <laughs> the Elastic and ECS people. You know, uh, um, mer merging projects and, and human stuff is like harder than code and engineering, in my opinion. So Always. I really appreciate this. Also, like uh, between like open tracing, open census, ECS, everyone talks about the XKCD comic of like you know one more standard. Uh, I think we may be the only project that's actually like del merged st more standards than we've created at this point, which is pretty awesome. Um, so uh, as part of this, uh, um, we're going to make some changes uh, under the hood. Uh, in particular, right now all the semantic conventions are part of the open telemetry specification. We are going to fork that out into two separate repos so that uh, we have two separate version numbers, uh, two separate sets of maintainers. Um, this will uh, make a lot more room for the ECS maintainers to come over and it'll also, I think, create a lot more clarity about changes to uh, semantics and data versus changes to like our SDKs and APIs. Still part of open telemetry though, just a different repo within uh, open yes. telemetry. Yes, still part of open telemetry, but um, just uh, uh, separate repos with separate, separate maintainers. Um, the other thing we have to figure out how to do is um, integrate um, all of these semantic conventions. Luckily, uh, open telemetry only has like a small subset of things that have been defined in ECS. Uh, ECS has also done a lot of great work on security and SecOps, so uh, a lot of great new stuff will be coming to the project as a result of that. Um, however, even though our semantic conventions have been in use in production for a very long time, they are still technically experimental. If you look at any instrumentation package uh, we provide in most language, they're 0.x, and we have always had it in our minds that we would do a final pass on all of these things, uh, really review them based on uh, user feedback and subject matter experts, and make any final changes to them uh, to ensure that it's really the highest quality uh, instrumentation that we can provide. Uh, part of that, uh, this is good timing uh, with the ECS merger because part of that work is looking at the areas where these two projects overlap and figuring out what the best way forward is there. And this is where we really, really need feedback from the community because we are definitely not going to roll out some kind of hard breaking change on this front and uh, even if we do come up with a better 1.0 that we mark as stable that's different than what's currently being offered, we would still maintain versions of our instrumentation with the current instrumentation in perpetuity. However, we are still very, very nervous about anything that's a change of this magnitude. Changing the data that's going into people's systems seems bad. Uh, it seems like you could break dashboards and alerts and other things if someone unwittingly you know, imported uh, a newer version of the instrumentation without realizing it. We can prevent that from happening, but we also want to understand what other problems might arise around having uh, old experimental uh, instrumentation that will eventually be flushed out, um, being replaced with uh, something that will be stable going forward. In other words, we're looking at one final set of changes to make everything perfect. 
but we are really worried that perfect might be the enemy of good enough, um, especially in things that are really, really widely adopted, like HTTP and networking. So this is an area where we really, really need feedback uh, from the end user community. If you have any concerns, if you can see ways that this would cause problems for you, we wanna collect all of that. Uh, if it's the case that with some of these, they're so widely deployed, maybe good enough is just good enough and we won't touch them. So if you have strong opinions about this, please open an issue uh, in the spec repo or the community repo. There's already an issue created discussing HTTP in particular, um, but we don't wanna move forward with this without uh, you know, uh, the blessing of the community. We do think it's a good positive thing to go through these one more time. We have seen places where we can really improve them, but um, open telemetry really, really, really values stability and backwards compatibility. So that is why we don't wanna do this without feedback. So please let us know. Also, you can tackle me after uh, this talk if you uh, are really concerned about this. Cool, so um, there are a lot of semantics. It's actually gonna take a long time to get through all of them. Um, if we spent uh, a total of three months reviewing each domain with the domains that we have, that's a year and a half worth of work. Um, the ones we are currently working on are HTTP. This is where we need the most feedback. Um, we're developing uh, new conventions with RUM, as uh, Dan men mentioned earlier. Uh, we also have a messaging SIG. There's actually a lot of heavy lifting going on here because um, messaging includes large asynchronous systems and queues, distributed queues of any kind. Uh, if you're familiar with distributed tracing, it really works best when you're talking about synchronous transactions, things that look like a tree. And when you get into big asynchronous messaging systems, you start to have other patterns that show up. You know, things like batch processing, um, things like merge and join that uh, are just a little more complicated than what you would see with uh, a regular old um, uh, web transaction. So uh, there's a bunch of work being go going on there to figure out how exactly uh, we want to model that domain. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, definitely join that SIG. We'd love more feedback. And last but not least, there's a functions as a service SIG. They're working on not just semantic conventions, but also improving um, Lambda in particular. Uh, so um, trying to get our Lambda support uh, to the next level, but I believe we're also targeting other serverless environments. Cool, on to the community update. Yes. All right, and then we'll get to questions quickly. Uh, so we'll just go over this pretty fast. Uh, this is the CNCF DevStats, great resource, uh, for open telemetry. Uh, so the, in the blue bars, you see our number of contributions to the project. I think this counts as like commits and comments and PRs, sort of GitHub activity for the project. Um, that is growing, uh, though, though certainly we started achieving sort of a stability there in 2021, but still growing slightly. But if you see the red line, I don't know how visible that is, but I'll use the mouse. Um, this is the number of contributors to OpenTelemetry uh, per month. So we've w well crossed the 900 monthly active contributors to OpenTelemetry. So this is the remains, this, I think, the second biggest project in the CNCF, which has been for some, some time. Uh, and it's just a very healthy signal of community growth. Uh, so if you're considering adopting open telemetry, know that there's a lot of people engaged on it, a lot of people working on it. To those who contribute to it, like as a community, thank you very much for your contributions. It's really exciting to see like how the challenge of extracting information from services and from infrastructure and everything else uh, is so motivating to so many people. Uh, certainly is to me and I think for everyone up here, as probably yourself if you're in this room. So thank you. Uh, as well, we just have a list of some of the major uh, companies that are contributing, um, you know, lots of cloud firms, observability film firms here, that's probably not a surprise. Uh, but I think what's really changed in the last year, year and a half is the ones I put in bold here. These are companies that are investing in primarily uh, in open telemetry, primarily for their own usage of it rather mm -hmm. than uh, for their customers. Uh, and so if you look at this list now, I think it's over, yeah, well over half are now end users. Uh, of open telemetry who are making contributions. This is the top, I think, list of top 40 uh, uh, con contributors to, to open telemetry. 
So this is very exciting. It's no longer just a bunch of vendors of strong commercial interests, although those interests have generally been very aligned within the community. It's very exciting to have so many end users and people who benefit from open telemetry and organizations who have to sign paychecks to invest in open telemetry choosing to do so because they're getting value out of it. I think that means there's a lot of staying power in this community and a just very, very healthy uh, atmosphere in the community. So we should all be very proud of that. Um, before we get, get involved, I'll later, was there anything else that you would wanted to add for this or no? No, I think we're okay. good. We're good. Okay, great. And then, I think the only thing was that I think Daniel, you were going to cover also getting involved with SIGs. And yeah. We're ready. Yeah. Yeah. So if you do want to get involved, uh, as Morgan just mentioned, we have... Uh, over nine, sorry, uh, over 900 monthly active contributors, which is huge. Uh, if you would like to be the 900 and first, uh, you're too late. But <laughs> somewhere in the first 1,000, uh, this is how you can get involved. So if anyone here uh, would like to get involved with the project, we are primarily, from a development standpoint, on the CNCF Slack. Uh, a lot of the people here are probably already on it. If you're not, you should be on it. It's a great way to get involved in not just our project, but many of the other uh, CNCF projects. Um, we're also trying to get better about uh, following uh, the Stack Overflow open telemetry tag. Uh, so if you are not sure how you can get involved from a coding perspective, but you're an enthusiastic or knowledgeable user, uh, this would be a huge help for us just to follow that and uh, help others who are having problems. And if you're having your own problems, that might be a good way to find solutions. Uh, and then finally, we are on GitHub, like everyone else, I think. Uh, join a working group. Uh, on our community repo, you can find a list of the working groups and uh, special interest groups. Uh, and when they meet, typically they meet weekly, some of them bi-weekly, it changes. Uh, and uh, that's probably the best way to get involved if you're really serious about, about making contributions. I might add just one thing there. I mean, uh, Slack is a great way to ask questions, but don't be afraid to join the meetings. We are a little more than most open source projects, I feel, kind of like face-to-face -face on Zoom focused. We find that's a great way to resolve uh, questions that you know are taking time in the GitHub issues. But sometimes I get feedback from people saying like, well, I'm not like a super, I'm not like a maintainer. I'm not like a, a serious contributor. I'm brand new, so I don't want to like go to the meeting because yeah, I'm not sure if I'm allowed there. Definitely, you're allowed there. It's great to show up. It's great to ask uh, basic questions there. Uh, we'd love to see your face. Yeah, and then, um, I just wanted to call out that we are a global community. Again, you know, Sean, for example, he is, uh, joins in from Australia. So we do have APAC-friendly as well as EU-friendly times. And so please don't be shy. You know, there are uh, alternate meetings for different time zones. And uh, it is, in general, if you need a meeting on a specific topic, please just ask for it. The maintainer is very supportive. The contributors are very supportive of being available. So. All right, with that, I think we're done. We have two QR codes here if you're interested. The first is for general project feedback on open telemetry if you're a user of it. The second is the standard test and feedback form for the session. Thank you for coming. I think we have a few minutes to tackle live questions. Uh, so Ted and I can run around with the microphones if people raise their hand to have them ask a question. Oh, and one last thing. Aaron. Um, we have some maintainers here. Please, Aaron, uh, Jacob, sorry, <laughs> Anthony. Um, and, and I think uh, Jacob had a request. He is uh, looking for, uh, he, he's actually a maintainer on the operator for the uh, open telemetry Kubernetes operator. And he is looking for other contributors, I think. And did you want to add anything else, Jacob? Uh, yeah, we'll be uh, just like sticking around after. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'll, I'll use my booming voice. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, after this session is done, I'll be like hanging around. If people have questions about contribution or questions about the operator in particular, um, so just yeah, come on by. Cool. All right. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Ted and I will pass you a microphone. Do you have any thoughts on using the logging signal to collect metrics? Because I think that's used by Istio and Envoy, and I heard about it, but I don't know whether is that something. Uh, so the question, oh, I guess everybody heard the question. Um, so I don't know if we have any official thoughts on that. I mean, logs are often used to capture metrics, so they can be. I think generally the preferences use native metric types if you can. They tend to be more efficient. They go directly into time series databases. 
If you have existing sources that are emitting logs, though, I, you can metricize those, I yeah. think, in the collector. Yeah. No, I think uh, in terms of instrumentation we're providing, we want to provide a suite of tracing logs and metrics out of the box. However, uh, there's absolutely nothing. One of the advantage of having structured logs that with like a regularized format is it becomes much more feasible to start generating metrics out of them. The harder problem of generating metrics out of traditional, you know, um, flat file human readable logs is the parsing, the fact that they may not be standard across different service types and things like that. So uh, that's definitely a thing you can do. You can also generate metrics out of traces, and that's actually a pretty common thing that yeah. people are doing today. Yeah, and that, what I was going to say is you can generate uh, metrics both from traces and logs using the collector. There are components in the collector for that. So if you're speaking about deriving metrics from logs, that's uh, possible today and uh, expanding. Yeah. But if, oh. if you control the source, I would stick with the yeah. actual core yeah. metrics type if you can. Right. So we've got time for probably two more questions. Anybody? Going once. We'll take trivia twice. questions. <laughs> All right. Well, you've been a great audience. We got one. Oh, we, go. we got one. All right. <laughs> uh, so, sorry. Um, so given that you're working together on the Elastic Common Schema, the thing that I'm missing with ECS is a JSON schema to validate against. Is that something that's on the map or you have thought about? Because currently yes. the Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so right now, uh, sort of like phase one is to get them um, kind of like locked in uh, and stable uh, in the spec. But once we've done that, we have to then roll out an implementation. And something we've discussed is part of that, making sure we have a validation and like testing harness that we can be using to, um, to ensure that everything um, uh, out there is, is actually conforming to the spec. Uh, we think that will make it a lot easier to keep track of this stuff. So, yeah, that's, that is something that's on a roadmap. We could probably do one last question if we see a hand. Yes. So in terms of backward compatibility, I wonder why open telemetry, at least in the metric schema, doesn't allow the slash character in the metrics names because that's, that was allowed in open census but not allowed in open telemetry. I mean, it's a very low-level question, but yeah, yeah. I, Josh Surth would be the person to yeah. answer. Yeah, Josh Surth, who also works at Google, actually, so would be the person to ask. Yeah. I yeah. think the 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 answer has to do with interoperability with Prometheus, which also does not Prometheus. allow slashes and names, uh, and interoperability with that project is a core goal of ours, like right from day one. But I would talk to Josh inter in, internally because you're at Google as well. Yeah, he'll know. Okay, at least I, I think. think we are out of time. Thank you, everyone.